listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again. Today, we have another show. We have our special guest. She is the growth architect. She's going to teach you everything that you te- that you need to know. Her name is Beate Shalette. She has an amazing website you can go to. It's her first last name, BeateSelect.com. And we're going to learn everything about what she does. She's the founder of The Women's Code. She's also a podcaster herself. And first and foremost, Beate Shalette, thank you for your time. How are you doing today? I'm excellent, Shamaya. Thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to this. Let's get focused. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thank you for your time. So like I said, you can go to your website. It's, it's super easy, BeateShalette.com. Kind of tell us a little bit about your expertise and what you do for your clients. Yeah, happy to. So my name is, as I said, Beate Schlett. I'm known as the growth architect. I'm here in Los Angeles, the city of misfits, as I lovingly say. And I mean by that, that everybody who doesn't fit anywhere else fits here magically. And I work with a lot of uh, visionaries, big thinkers, thought leaders, unusual people that have a difficult time landing planes. And I'm the one who helps to develop the strategy systems and the workflows, the processes, and the plan on how we are going to help them to grow their authority and scale their impact. And when it comes to being an authority in your industry, that's something that you are helping people to discover and to explore. So for the audience, kind of explain to us, just starting out, what does it mean to actually become an authority in your own industry? And that is exactly the first question that you need to ask yourself if you want to be the authority. And let's just make a clarification so it's clear what authority actually is. A lot of people think that being an influencer or celebrity is the same as authority. It is not. Being an influencer and being a celebrity typically is reserved for a very, very, very small percentage. Most of us, especially the talking head kind of people, are typically authorities. And an authority is an industry expert, somebody who is an expert in what they do in their particular field. So when we talk about building an authority or growing your authority, You want to always get clear on what do you have authority in? And then people get kind of very wide in their assumption. They say, well, I'm I'm an expert in everything business. Well, to be an authority in everything business, like maybe uh, somebody like a Grant Cardone is very difficult because it's a very broad thing. So then what you're the expert in? So for us, you know, we then decided we are going to be the growth architect, meaning we can architect growth. That's what we are experts in. We are not experts in hiring. We're not experts in job interviews. We're not experts in in leadership, change management. We're experts in architecting growth and then helping you to figure out what are the pieces that you need to do that. That's what we are an authority in. So as you build your own authority, you want to be looking at to what's your super skill, what are you really good at, what's so easy for you that you can't imagine that other people have a problem with that. That's usually a pretty good giveaway for authority. Um, And then you want to think about who are the people that you're serving? Why are they needing someone like you? And what is it that they need from someone like you? And that's then how you build these authority pieces I'm the authority in growth architecture. We work with visionaries and thought leaders who want to grow their authority and scale their impact. And then suddenly you now can call yourself an authority in this particular field. When it comes to being able to kind of architect your, if I can, if I may, your, your blueprint and goals in life, Professionally speaking, you've done that in some. I read on my cheat sheet that you sold your business to Bill Gates in a recession. Can you tell us a little bit about that story? Yeah, I certainly did. And the the story is 
a story that probably isn't going to be so different from most stories is that I am original from Germany. I come from a creative background. I was a photographer and then realized very quickly that I was better at the business side of things. And I went into becoming a photo editor, then immigrated to the United States, became a photographer representative, a still photography producer, produced for companies like Mercedes-Benz, BMW, Wrangler, Levi Strauss, got a lot of really great clients in t- and had a phenomenal time. And then something happened, which I call the decade of bad luck, where over a period of about 13 years, stuff happened to me that really doesn't normally happen to one person. Maybe like one thing, you know, I was in a lawsuit with a bad employee and I was uh, who, who basically tried to steal my business from me and effectively did. And I lost a half a million dollars, my entire production business in 24 hours in September 11th with the towers went my business. I lost my key vendor in a tsunami in, in Asia, in Phuket, you know, things that just doesn't happen to other people. I went through a divorce in, in, in the massive earthquake and I ended up being a single mom immigrant who was $135,000 in debt really trying hard to figure out how I was going to build a life for myself and my child. And I had at the time lost everything multiple times over and, but didn't have a choice because I was unemployable, Shemaya. And I had this great idea to build a stock photography syndication for architecture and interior images, which I did, but you know, I had no money. So with this debt, I go to Germany and my father has a stroke and I was supposed to go to this international conference. And then my father passes away six weeks later of pancreatic cancer. And as I'm standing at the funeral in Germany, paying for flights with money I don't have, losing my best friend and my business going absolutely nowhere, I fell to my knees and I raised my fist and I yelled at God and I said, if you have a plan, this would be a really good time for you to fill me in. And I flew back to Los Angeles and I had really no chance but to surrender, especially at that moment, the phone rings and I get a call from my office in Los Angeles that we've been served to notice and I'll be losing the house on top of everything. And as I come back, I'm like, okay, fine. You know, maybe it's time to call the bankruptcy attorney after all. And then I get a letter from the White House and I had written in my absolute desperation And because my former mother-in-law was such a nag about it, a letter to the president of the United States is a true story. And I I sent that letter only so I would not ever have to talk to her about this because she was such a, I mean, literally a nag. Why don't you write that letter to the president? Is your president? If anybody can help you as a president, why don't you go to the number one person in the country? You know, this is the president. Fine, I'm going to write the letter so we don't ever have to talk about writing a letter again. Imagine my surprise when this letter comes from the White House. Now, the president of the United States, even though he sends me his best wishes, of course, never saw this letter. But it did put me in touch with a small business administration with a second in command, who was probably very curious who this nutcase was that was writing a letter to the president instead of calling him. And as I'm sitting there in the office, he says, I'll put in what you put in. And then they found me a bank that was going to take my debt, restructure it, in a 10-year fixed loan, which freed up my line of credit, that brought me to break even three months later. 18 months later, I'm the world leader in my category. And now the Bill Gates company comes and says, how do you do it? I said, you want it, you buy it. And then I'll tell you. And they said, fine, how much do you want? I said, a couple million dollars. And then they said, okay, that's how I got to sell my business to Bill Gates. That's amazing. Wow. That that's an amazing story. I mean, that 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 looks like and sounds like it could be a movie right there. I mean, that wow. Did you ever do that like I'm doing right now? Did you say wow to yourself, or was it just all right? Let's just see what's next. You know, I think that when you're in it and it is your story, it is. You know, let's not forget it. It went over thirteen years, and a lot of it was just pure survival, hardcore survival. When I sold the business, all I wanted to talk about is the success and how I did it. And nobody wants to hear that. Nobody cares. Everybody wants to the story. And 
in the days since, I've, I've told this story many, many, many times. And every time I hear the story now, to your point, I go, damn, this is a pretty damn good story. And what a, what a crazy ride for one person to take and what a testament to the resilience, adversity and overcoming. Absolutely. Yeah, because you're, uh, if you look at the mile markers, it's like, wow, <laughs> that is something that you read in a book or you see in a movie. And oh, and then and then they'll tell you, come on, you you're overdoing it. She doesn't need another tragedy. Please, what now? Now the photographer <laughs> dies in a tsunami, and the photographer's boyfriend is Nate Burkus. Oprah's Nate Bur- Burkus, and the whole thing is on Oprah. Yeah, oh, that's true. another wow. And yeah, this is an amazing uh, story that we're unpacking here. Once again, listen, I'm Refocus Radio talking to our special guest. Excuse me. Our special guest today, Beate Chalette, and she has a website you can check out. It's BeateChalette.com. And excuse me, my allergies, but when you look at the story that you were able to, to write, I mean, a little girl from Germany who... I would say dream big. I mean, I don't know. I'll let you say uh, to that, but were you always a big dreamer or was this something that grew, uh, that you grew into when you got older? I definitely think I, I don't know if it was a big dreamer. That's actually a very, very good question. I don't know if it was so much a dreamer as, as a rebel on not wanting what conservative Germany had in store for me. And there was an aptitude test, Jemaya, I took when I was 16. And it went over pages and pages and pages and pages. And they ask you things like, do you like being outside? Yeah. Do you mind carrying heavy loads? No. Are you afraid of heights? No. And on and on and on it goes. And at the end of this aptitude test, it says, you should be a roofer. Okay, uh, no. <laughs> and then she says, <laughs> what else do you want to be? I said, I want to be a jewelry designer. She said, ah, there's lots of applicants and nobody, not enough jobs. I said, what about a textile designer? Uh, too many applicants, not enough jobs. What about a photographer? Too many applicants, not enough jobs. I said, this sucks. I'm going to be a photographer anyway. And then there was a moment where I, as a photo assistant, it was my job to bring a helicopter on a glacier in Switzerland with an Audi Quattro attached to it as a gift for a big catalog contest. And there was this moment where the you hear the rotor blades and then you see the and it comes over to this huge helicopter with his car attached to it, flying over the mountaintop. I'm like, yep, I'm outside. I'm definitely schlepping and I'm not afraid of eyes. I'm doing exactly what the aptitude test said said I was going to do. It is the interpretation of other people that is wrong. That's what I learned early on is that other people's idea of what you should be mostly sucks. But it doesn't mean that what you find out that you're passionate about is wrong. It just means you have to find the right application for it. When you look at the success you have today, everyone has their own definition of success. But someone on the outside looking in will see your story and say, man, okay, Beate really went all the way in to her dreams. That's just from the outside looking in is what it feels like. How would you say you built your mindset in order for you to sustain the success that you have today? I think the... There's a couple of things that sustained me. So number one is my belief that I will not drown in a puddle. It is just not worth it. If I drown, it'll be in the ocean. I will not die by a match. I will die by a flaming inferno. At least it's worth it. So I had a very clear vision of I was going to push it all the way because then and only then would I know if it was mine or not. The second thing was that 
you have to really train yourself to not take failure personal. Because if I would have, I would have given up at any, I mean, after disaster number five, you know, I'm, I'm now at, I think, disaster number nine. Uh, if I would have given up after five, people would have said, you know what, Beate, totally get it. You did what you could, gave it the best that you could give it, totally get it. Just get a job. I just couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Aside from me being completely unemployable. So the the measure at the end of the day was, and the third piece in this was that I, I couldn't believe that God would put me through all of this and at the end of the day stand there and goes, na 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 the joke is on you? Really? I mean, I couldn't fathom that there was some entity this cruel that would do that. So I, I, I choose to believe that it all had to be good for something. Well, and it did because when the ship came in, look what a ship it was. Luxury liner, not a cruise ship cabin below deck, but above, you know, my own boat. And while I, you know, didn't make tens of millions of dollars, but I made enough and I made out, I made out well, and it put me in the 1%. So I'm, I'm looking at this and I, I think that the, the mindset always has to be, you have to be convinced that what it is that you're doing is worthwhile because there's nobody out there convincing you of the opposite. Maybe except your mom, but your mom's not really the authority in the market here. You are the authority. And you have to take the authority and you have to fight and claw your way through it. And then at the end of the day, it comes down to what is it that you really truly believe in? Do you believe that you wasted your time? Or do you believe that you will be richly rewarded for everything that you've done? You just don't know until you know when you're there. You're listening to Omni Focus Radio, talking to our guest, Beate Shillette. She has a website, BeateShillette.com. And I just want to say something real quick based on what you were talking about, because giving up is super easy. It's like, it's the first thing that you can choose from in the buffet line. And for our audience, <clears throat> I just want to say real quick, I'll get back to you, is that I get asked all the time, how, how'd you come up with this show, man? How, how you do this show, man? This, how, how you do this? How you get so many interviews? How you, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. The first thing that I thought I was going to do was not radio. <laughs> I never knew I was going to be doing radio. I never knew I'd be doing these interviews. I never knew that all this was, was bound to happen. It all started at a barber shop, believe it or not. We all right. A, yeah, we had a table. Didn't know what I was doing. But the owner of that shop is uh, Rico Rodriguez. He's a former uh, boxer from Philly. And he told me, he said, man, you have a voice for radio. And I was like, yeah, I, I heard that a few times. Um, but he said, no, seriously. And so I said, all right. Uh, he wanted me to do, the sh do a show. And I said, okay, uh, I'll just, all right, let's, all right, you think it's going to be that? Well, let, let's go, I'll go for it. He said, you can do it in my shop, man. So we set up the podcast show in the shop, inside a barber shop. You heard clippers and everything. Y'all can go to the first, what, 100 episodes. I don't know if it's that many, but that's the whole beginnings. You heard nothing but clippers in the background. I love it. I love it. And you we, know, you do what it takes. Yeah. And what I'm trying to get at is, is like you, you know, paraphrasing a little bit, you know, you, you thought you you were going to stay in this uh, rat ship, and the whole time you just, you were handing the blueprints for the biggest ship in the world. And I would I never... Mean, yeah, I yeah, would, exactly. I love the yeah. way you put that. Yeah, go ahead. And real quick, it's just, I feel like people need to know this. I never knew the type of people that y'all see on Refocus Radio homepage.com. I never knew I was going to interview those people. Never. You, you know, my wildest dreams. You could never told me. Same thing, like, president uh, of yourself, 
Beyonce is crazy, but it's about stories. And the more powerful a story is, the more storms, the more issues, and the more failures that's probably attached to that success. I mean, that's the story never reads. We woke up one day, prince and princess, everything was handed to us. And then one day somebody crowned us king and queen, except maybe, you know, Prince Charles, now King Charles of London. And God, what a freaking boring story that is. There's nothing to that if it's handed to you. But if if the appeal of the, the 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 story is how you dug yourself out and made something out of yourself and took an opportunity and then created the pathway for many others after you to come, that's a story. That's a story to tell. You're also an author. You're the author of The Women's Code, Happy Woman, Happy World, a foolproof fix that takes you from overwhelmed to awesome. Kind of let the audience know a little bit about that book and what are some key points they can take away. Yeah, so the book I wrote because I realized after I sold the company uh, to the Bill Gates company that there was a lot that was going on in organizations from minorities and women that just wasn't right. And I saw that men, especially white men for the most part, have an unwritten code that they follow, stuff happens that you are unaware of and stuff gets decided that you didn't know. And you can't really quite ever figure out what you did or didn't do because you're just not part of this code. And then I looked at how women are interacting at work and I found that women don't have a code at work. And I figured if we if we try to take on on the outside the big issue without having figured out our own internal issue, meaning we don't have a code amongst each other toward other women, and we frankly don't deserve any better than what we get. And so I wrote the book. And as I wrote the book, I came up with a couple of concepts that have since been getting a lot of accolades. You know, one is the superhuman paradox in the book behind the scenes it was was kind of written like a book. It's only available as a paperback, audiobook, and a ebook. And the paperback is the chapters are written short enough because I wanted women as they read it, leave it in the bathroom for their men to find. Because it's been called the playbook of the other team to really understand what goes inside a woman's head. Because we, you know, the women's code understands that there's a men's code and we want to form together a new code that is beneficial for both where we don't have to be at each other's throat anymore. And so I developed the concept called the superhuman paradox on why we always change perfection and what to do about that. I created a concept called ego rhythm, which helps people to understand on what rhythm in life they're in and why it is important to set a main focus on one, one rhythm and not all nine at the same time, because it's a crazy making concept and to really understand how to be a leader in your own life. So that's the purpose of the book. We're talking to our guest, Beate Chalette, the growth architect. I mean, man, it's like when you read that and you learn about your story, it's like that was a perfect thing to come up with. When you look at life, your life, and how you've been able to take every opportunity, whether good or bad, and make something of it. I love what you said earlier about I'm not drowning in the in the puddle of water. I'm not going to die by you know, a strike of a match. That is, that is good. I mean, that's sounds like wisdom that you had to live through that in order to obtain that type of wisdom. What will be the message you hope years from now people appreciate from your life? I think it is really my no bullshit attitude that it's really much simpler than you think and there's lots of shortcuts. So you can either figure this out on your own the long way, which I did, or you can find people who are experts, authority in something, pay them, and you find the shortcuts. 
So that's really a personal decision you have to make. So that's num number one. The second message really is that we have to always look at this from a perspective of how do we frame things. Yeah, it's a tough time. Uh, COVID was tough. It caused a lot of mental issues. People are distraught, angry, upset. But then again, there's never been a time in the world where that wasn't the case. Somebody's always angry at someone for something. So you always get to make a decision. And I look at, you know, when I work with my clients, I ask them, Shemaya, very simple questions. I said, is it possible? Is what you're trying to achieve possible? Has anybody ever done this before? Yes. So then if it is possible, is it possible for you? Yes. If it is possible for you, the question isn't, can I? The question is, how can I? And that brings the action with it. So my message is the decision. What decision are you going to make? Can you afford to wait until one day when one day, I don't know exactly what's one day going to happen. Or are you going to make today day one? Yeah. Yeah, because one day is not um, any date on any of the 12 months on the calendar. So No, that's, it, it, that's and that's something. And I, I here's another one I talk about. The wait and see attitude that I see is so prevalent right now that doesn't exist in nature. I mean, when was the last time you went by an oak in spring and then the oak was kind of like, you know what, Jemaya, it's a little rough for me. So I'm only going to like sprout about 100 leaves. We're going to see how it goes if the birds come, if people appreciate it, if people stop and look at the 100 leaves and say, wow, these are really amazing leaves. I'm going to do a slow rollout over the next couple of months, but I don't really want to like put it all out there for everybody. I'm just going to wait and see. How about the squirrel? How about the squirrel goes like, you know what, dude, winter is BS. I'm just with, with global warning. I, I don't, I don't need to do what other squirrels before me have done. I'm just going to hang out, sit around in the sun, do nothing. And if it gets cold and if winter comes, I'll figure the food out. No problem. It says no nature ever. So if it's a concept that doesn't exist in nature, how do you, think that that concept works for you. Yeah. It doesn't exist. Just ask Texas how that feels when they get surprised with winter cold weather. I'll leave it there <laughs> on that part. But I mean, man, we can probably go for another few minutes, but real quick, one thing I want to cover is uh, services that you provide. You have one-on-one -on -one service, you have development and workshops, you have online courses. What's well, some of the resources that people can find on your website? to learn more about opportunities to grow them in their business. Yeah. So the first thing that I would want everybody to do, and we literally just finished this is go to what's your talent worth.com. We just did a quiz to help people to figure out what is your talent worth. So I came up with an actual mathematical calculation. So you go there, you fill this out, it'll spit out a number and it'll tell you what your earning potential in this market is. And then you're going to look at that number and you're going to look at what you're making right now. And there is a discrepancy. And if you laugh at the number, then we have to work on your mindset and confidence. And if you look at that number and you say, hell yes, then we need to be creating something that gives you an opportunity to actually make that kind of money. So that's why I would start. You can find uh, a lot of stuff on uh, on my work, Beata Shalet, the growth architect all over the internet, specifically, you know, my YouTube channel, or you can go to my show, my own podcast, the Business Growth Architect Show. Or if you've heard something and you go, I need to speak to this woman right away, then go to uncoverysession.com. I'll, I'll gift you a 15 minute free uncovery session. Make sure you mention Shemaya. Uh, because then you get priority treatment. And for all of the, for all of you who now have listened to this, I want you to go wherever you pick up this podcast, give this show a five star review and a comment. Comments are critical for the algorithm to show engagement, which will serve it in front of more people. This is a labor of love. And I think Shemaya deserves it. Then share the episode with one other person. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. If you're listening right now, make sure you share this episode with everyone you know. You know how to do an email blast. 
do it. Send a text, do it, share the show. We've been talking to our guest today, Beyonce Chalette. You can go to her website, BeyonceChalette.com. Get her book that, you know, you can really get a lot of valuable information from the woman's code, Happy Woman, Happy World, the foolproof fix that takes you from overwhelmed to awesome. It's been great times on this show. And I have to say this one today was really one of the top 1% for sure. Want to say thanks to you, Beyonce, for your time. Thank you so much for having me.